See, recently there's been a spree of people breaking into vehicles at trailheads, trailhead thieves, and I've come up with a solution to stop them. We need to come together and get these people in prison. Now, being someone more frugal than your most frugal friend, I've come up with a solution that anyone can do. So I've got four solutions here, and I've tested them out with multiple different power banks, and we're gonna catch us some criminals. Now, if you're not familiar with trailhead thieves, what they do is they park out at a trailhead, usually a popular one, and they'll wait there till midnight, and they just watch people drive in. They keep tallies on these people, and they know which ones are the backpackers. And at you know midnight, one, two in the morning, they get out, they smash the windows, they steal all their stuff, and they leave. Now, this recently happened up in San Joseph Bay. Four vehicles were smashed, and they drilled holes in their gas tanks and stole their gas. Now, as far as I'm concerned, we should have a law in Canadian, and this should be in the US as well, everywhere. There should be a law in Canadian uh, legislature that is immediate deportation, you lose your citizenship. It doesn't matter if you're born in Canada, get rid of these people, we don't need them in our country. But the best we can do is we can catch these people. So what we need is when you go out hiking, we need to put cameras up in the trees in random places so we can catch these people. And so I've tested out a bunch of old crappy technology that I can leave in the woods, hidden in the tree. So if someone steals it, I don't care if it gets stolen. So there's two solutions here. There's either the paid solution or the frugal solution. The paid solution you're gonna to wanna to get a trail camera, which I think hunters use to find deer and that kind of stuff. And they're basically, they range from 50 bucks all the way up to 100, 150, whatever. Um, they vary because some of them will have a time-lapse feature that just takes pictures that are motion activated. These are usually run off of AA batteries or AAA batteries or something. The frugal solution is to use one of these cameras with a power bank to extend the range of the, the time it can take pictures or video. So first off, we've got a GoPro. This is a GoPro Hero 2. This works for any GoPros, even a Hero 1. And all you're gonna do is set this to a time-lapse feature to take a picture every five seconds. Now the next one we've got is an old cell phone. Everyone has old cell phones. This has the best battery life for doing this. And same thing, you're gonna use an app on here and have it set for every five seconds, take a picture. Next one here is this thing, which is a, uh, was a Canon uh, ELF SD400. This you can use, I didn't try this one out, I just checked it out, you can use it online. Somebody wrote a time-lapse feature code for this, you just have to flash the BIOS with this code and then you can set uh, a time-lapse feature on this. I just didn't go through all the work of that because I already got three solutions here that work perfectly fine for me, but if this is all you got, you can use this. And the next one is an old dash cam. Now this doesn't have a battery on it, so this is 100% reliant on the power bank, but these are lightweight, um, literally and memory and power-wise, um, but they, they'll record video and eventually the screen will shut off after three minutes. Now the screen shutting off is the key because that's where all the power, the power gets sucked out. This thing will record video, not just the pictures that the other two do. So I tested all three of these with this 3200 milliamp uh, power bank I have. It has a solar panel, which doesn't work. So don't bother buying into that. That's just crappy marketing stuff. So for 3200 milliamp, and though the next one here is, this is 1800 milliamp from the dollar store for three bucks. So put that in perspective, I bought this for 10 bucks. This makes my GoPro last, uh, so the GoPro by itself lasts one hour and 45 minutes. We add this and it lasts eight and a half hours. That's taking a time-lapse photos. Now the dash camera plugged into this lasted for three and a half hours, but it's taking video, 1080p video. I also tried with 720p video, which didn't add, last that much longer, like four hours and 15 minutes or something. So at that point, the footage is so low res, it's like, eh or you can actually get any quality footage you could use of someone's face. And then finally, the best solution is the old cell phone, which I'm happy about because everyone has old cell phones. And this is an old Huawei phone, which had fantastic battery life to begin with. With the battery bank, um, I tested this one out and it lasted over 12 hours. This is, the, this is the solution to go with. It depends on the state of your battery, your phone and all that. You're gonna have to test all this out for yourself because old batteries will have a certain level of state that they're at and they're not gonna just be what these numbers are. But, you know, this is about four hours of recording. This probably has four hours. So an eight hour day hike. This solution alone, if all you have is just one old cell phone and no power banks, three bucks, plug it in, set on the time-lapse feature, you're, you're good to go. Just hide that in the tree. The, the things you want a cell phone that you obviously, someone steals it, you're gonna be like, eh, I don't really care. Like at this point, I don't want this phone, I don't need it, so. Now the key thing to note is the cell, for the cell phones, you have to use a very specific app. There's a whole bunch of time-lapse apps. I've tried all of them and it's a real pain in the butt. Um, you need one, obviously one you don't want to pay for because most of them have features that we need that you have to pay for. So there's one, I think it's called Time Lapse. It's a white icon, uh, which you can see here on the screen. And basically this one allows you to turn off the screen. So you're going to set it to five second picture. So picture every five seconds 
and you push the little eyeball button and it turns off the screen. That way we're saving all that power and all it is is taking pictures. Now, one thing I just wanna note here is if you have a bigger power bank, this is when you can get into some backpacking and you're really protecting yourself. If, if we're going with this solution where we're getting 12 hours out of our, you know, 3,400, 3,200 milliamp. Um, so we're gonna need 6,000, 7,000 milliamps to get a 24 hour backpacking day in if we've got one full day. And if you're going for two days, we're gonna need like 14,000, something like that. Um, usually they, you can buy them 20,000, whatever. The thing is you're putting that at risk, you know, having it in a tree, but something like this, this is a 10,000 milliamp. And then this big one, I could probably go for three or four days. It's a 25,000 milliamp power bank. I wouldn't use this though, but I think this was like 50 bucks for this thing. So you could technically, if you're really worried about it and you'd rather lose, potentially lose the 50 bucks plus an old cell phone versus having your vehicle smashed, you know, but at that point you're getting to the range where you can buy one of those trail cameras and they're already camouflaged. Okay, so to set this up, all we're gonna do is take our cell phone and we're gonna take an old sock. We all have an old sock we don't want. And we're gonna put all of this stuff in the sock and we're gonna put a couple elastics around where the camera is. So this is where our camera is. We're just gonna cut a little hole by pinching it and just cutting it flush underneath. Just moving around, there we go. There's our camera. There we go, so now we've got the camera and twist tie and we can attach that to the elastic bands up here so it can, you know, depending on the tree access you have. So let's go do that. So we go in the woods here, say I just pulled in, say our vehicle's parked right here and, you know, we're gonna look for a place to set up the camera, right? Take a look around, take a look around. If you look right there, I have the camera set up right there looking at us. There it is. So you just want to get some branches and stuff, stick it through the elastic so you can hide it in there. And if you had a brown sock, it would actually be better. Now the main downside of my camera here is it's white. The case is white, which really stands out because it's reflective. So for this reason, I'll be using the GoPro. It's just a lot easier to set up than using that with a sock and all that. But I just want to show you can use anything. But if you have a case that's matte, it's even better. Now for most angles, you can't see that. And all that really matters is the vision is clear towards where your vehicle is parked, say if it's parked there. As long as it's clear and the branches aren't blocking that spot, you wanna cover up the rust so it's not, uh, you know, so visible from the other sides. The idea is to put this in a spot where we're not walking towards. So we want the back of the forest to be back that way and the trailhead to be this way. So people always walk this direction, not looking at where our camera is. So I'll be traveling with three of these cameras. I'll probably use the GoPro for most of it just cause it's easier to set up and get going. But uh, at some point I will upgrade to those trail cameras that already have the built-in camouflage on them. It'll just be a lot easier and they'll probably be better quality footage, but you gotta pay for that. So I bet you'll upgrade, but I will link those in the description below if you're interested in checking them out. Be sure to, sus be sure to subscribe until next one. Have a great day.